look at this, move the camera, move the objects, and we get a new concept idea done in seconds. This was made with a simple Confi UI setup, easy to follow and fast. If you're aiming for even higher visual output, Flux is a better option. It's not really real time, but gives stunning result. I'm showing this because AI now can be controlled and I've already been using it in my pipeline for client work. My name is Anton Janitsky. I've been a 3D artist for 15 years. Along the way, I've constantly had to learn new techniques to stay relevant. And AI is one of the most powerful shifts I've seen. To help others get started without the usual trial and error, I've put together a set of Confio tutorials and ready-to-use workflows that make the process clear, fast, and practical. Everything is available on my website, and I have a special lunch discount right now. The earlier you can dive in into deep AI understanding, the better edge you can get as a professional. Meanwhile, let's build workflow from scratch. I have opened ConfUI. If you don't get this default image generation template, go into Window, Browse Templates, and this is the image generation that we have. And we can reuse all of these nodes. Now I want to pick one of the nodes, right click, assign different color, green for the positive prompt, right click here, color red for negative prompt. I will type in a more sensible prompt a bit later. The case sampler, our main node that is going to process our image, is currently having this particular input, empty latent image. We are going to replace it with a screen share node. That node is coming from a Mixlab pack, the one we have to go and look for in the custom nodes inside the ConfUI manager. This pack you need to install. Double click, look for screen share Mixlab. It is having an issue, maybe it's a Chrome browser issue because it is running the JavaScript inside Chrome. The whole Confi UI is a JavaScript code. I wasn't able to fix this layout. It is always a little bit outside the box. Screen share node, I want to connect it to resize image node from Essentials pack, which you also need to install. This one is very important. It has many useful nodes. I will drag from current frame to the image resize. This is important because we will be picking an area from the screen. We want to resize it precisely for the AI model to run better and do a better job without this less glitching, since it is always trained either on 512 pixel images for stable diffusion 1.5 or 1024 pixel images for SDXL or Flux. We need to convert this image into latent space. I will drag this out and look for VAE encode. VAE encode is converting and compressing the image that it makes it much faster to process in latent space. And we need the VAE, which stands for Rational Autoencoder. We need to plug it in inside the VAE encode and then drag it into the latent image in the case sampler. Then we take the image here again. I want to plug it into Depth Anything. Depth Anything is another custom node. I need to look for ConfUI Depth Anything version 2. It will be able to read the depth of our image. It will also require you to download a control net for the Depth Anything. So I'll go to Model Manager and look here for Depth Anything. You can see I've already installed this one, the biggest one. You can need to click on it, install it, and reload the Chrome browser. I will double click, look for Depth Anything. I click on that, then I go connect image to Depth Anything version 2. And we need a preview of this image because we want to check that it is generating a correct depth image during the whole run process. This then goes into Apply Control Net. Apply Control Net node, I connect the depth image we got from the depth anything node. Then I want to plug in my positive prompt and negative prompt. This is going to pipe into the K sampler through this node. The VAE is also a must to input. And we need to input the control net. Double click, load control net model. Then we need to find a control net model. It is a different model for every diffusion model. Stable Diffusion 1.5 has different control nets for reading depth versus SDXL versus Flux. We need to get Stable Diffusion 1.5 control net depth model. I'll go to Manager, Model Manager, look for depth 
and I got this one, Control Net version 1-1. Download it, reload Confi, and you have it available, and it will be running and reading and interpreting the image. This is the whole network that we need to run. Before we open Blender, I want to download a character from Mixamo. Mixamo is a free website where we can get character animations and use them in our projects, including the characters themselves. I did create my own set of characters and rig them for my website because I cannot use this commercially in a package. However, for any YouTube viewer, I think it is easier to come to Mixama and grab a character to go ahead. It already loaded the character I used before. The way I found this character, I went to Characters tab and they have a big collection of different characters. I was looking for something a bit more anatomy. It's not really mandatory. This control depth networks, they can deal even with basically stick figures, really. You can see here, Jennifer is my avatar. Then I go back to animations and you find an animation with the pose that will fit your idea. Then I search for sword. Animation I pick is great sword crouching block to crouch. 14 frames, any frame here can be used for our pose. Let's go download FBX file. Gives you these options. How many frames per second? Skin without skin. I keep it at default. It doesn't really matter. I'm just using this for posing. This is the file you will get. 50 megabytes. Let's open. Let's input it to Blender. Inside Blender, I will go input, input FBX. Pick the FBX and do a standard input. Open the model. I can hide the armature. We don't need to see that. I can drag the timeline to see a better angle. I think this is good enough. We can start building, so I'm pressing Shift A to create the cube. This whole thing was done using cubes, spheres, and cylinders. I will use a cylinder for the lightsaber, place it about right. It's, it's a static pose, so I'm not really concerned that it's not parented. And to build the city, I basically duplicated this, placed it around. I, don't want to show how I duplicated a million cubes. Let me just skip to that. This is the scene I end up creating. A lot of boxes of different styles. Duplicated many, many times and stretched out to create this epic cityscape. Then what I do, I navigate my camera, place it somewhere here. I do have a light and we can run it as Eevee and activate the ray tracing. My sun is hidden, so I will unhide it. Pretty ugly deformed pose, but AI will take care of that and it will rebuild the anatomy. Even, even the hands, they can, we can always call them AI hands here because they all screwed up. I Windows button left arrow to the left side for the blender. I Windows button to the right arrow right side for ConfUI because we want to grab the screen. You can also use a dual monitor setup, which I presume you most likely have. Now we can talk about the screen share node. Before that, one little tweak in the view of Blender, I want to change the focal lens to 80 millimeters. Don't want to have extreme distortion for the character. AI models that don't really like when the anatomy is too distorted. By the way, I press N when I'm hiding the panel. Let's go to screen share. And let's click share screen. It will ask me what to what to grab. I will go click Mixama superhero scene. And then I will click on set area. Drag out right here approximately a square. I think it's far from being a square. Let me zoom out on this character a little bit and try to set area again. So it's a little bit more like a square. Okay, there we go. I click on live run and we have this now updated in ConfUI. Often the refresh rate is fast. Click run and it will start to process model. I can see it's ch choking here. Apparently I forgot to load up a basic stable diffusion model. Ah, it was in a run folder. Let's run again. Also load up the control net model. I can see that it read the depths pretty well and I forgot to do the prompt. So it's trying to do this kind of magic bottle prompt. Let's type in something more exciting. 
I typed in a city day woman holding a red lightsaber in a cyberpunk city at night during rain, and I added nudity and not safe for work in the negative prompt, which I forgot to rename. Let's click on run, and I hope it doesn't produce a nude image. Actually, I have to pause before I look. We got a stable diffusion creation, which is rather ugly, and one way to improve on that is to reduce strength on apply control net. I can drop it to 180, 80%. I can also reduce the end percentage applying of control net. So it is going to have a lot more freedom at the end. So the, the further it goes, the more freedom the, the model has. Let's try to generate it again. It's no longer very strict. It's getting something. And I'm running this on a original stable diffusion model, which is honestly very, very bad. Didn't expect anything to look good because it's very basic. I switched model to Epic Photogasm. It's a more fine-tuned stable diffusion model, which I used a lot in other generations and other videos, and it got a bit better result. If I go click run instant, it will keep on running and running. Let me click on that. And now let me move the screen on the left and it will update here automatically. It has a little bit of a lag because it's still processing the latest image it got from the screen share node. Let me keep on moving the camera. The output is much worse than what I show on a thumbnail or anywhere else because I'm using stable diffusion regular version it's uh, incredibly fast, and if you want to test it on a low-end system, this is the way to go. Uh, a better version I want to show now is to use SDXL model. I need to go stop share. It is intense node. It's consuming a lot of resources. I think we can even change refresh rate to 50. 50 will do. We need to change our model to SDXL, and I'm using, in this case, RealV's SDXL model. You need to download it from cvdai.com. And the link is going to be in the description. This will produce a much better result. I already have it downloaded. Pick it from the drop list. Then we are going to deal with a bigger resolution. The model SDXL is trained on 1024 and 1024. If you actually if you lower down the values to 512 by 512, you'll get an inferior image. In depth anything, I need to change this too. I need to change the control net to SDXL control net. Let's go to Manager, Model Manager, is the Excel Depth. This one that we need, let's install it. After I download it and reload the web page with ConfUI, I can now look for the control and depths. This is SDXL Lighting model, and it, we can run it much faster than a full SDXL model because we can lower the steps. I will go to CFG 1.5. Step six, Windows button to arrow to the right. Now we have two windows here again. Click share screen, pick window. It already remembers our area. It won't be as fast as stable diffusion. And I'm running this on a laptop with four gigs of RAM. Before running this on a PC tower with 24 gigs of RAM, seven seconds. And there we go. A much, much better image. That's what we we're talking about. Change the camera, run it again. And of course, at any given time, I can grab this box, place it somewhere and make a render like this. Let's click on run. And there we go. It's trying to create a rain there, failing a little bit. Don't think I'll like that. I want to try a different pro. Medieval night in front of a castle. Gloomy day. So control enter to run that. I have this wireframe on the character, which is not the best thing to have since it can get interpreted by AI model. It's better not to have any overlays whatsoever. And here we go. We got our knight with his really funny face. Okay, now the face got covered much better. The castle looks pretty nice. And what I was typing in, I was typing in some mossy rocks, grass in front. I was changing the strengths of this control net, lowering down the control net strengths. It was having a bit more freedom, generating a bit more natural scenery. Also, if you don't use just boxes or if you bring in the mesh, it's a bit nicer, like some blobs for ground. Or if you bring in actual castles there into Blender, you can get a much better generation. I'm trying to show that we can achieve pretty nice results with extreme bare bone setup. 
If you don't want to build this network yourself, I provide it on my website. Also, there are other perks there. I show how to do batch rendering, creating somewhat of a glitchy animations. Or if you want to batch render a folder of 100 images, I will show how to do it. But give this setup a go. Flux does a much better job that SDXL and Stable Diffusion are way faster. If this helped you or gave you ideas, check out the full workflows and training materials on my website. Everything's downloadable and ready to go. Grab the launch discount while it's up and see you in the next video.